Here from Kyrie postgame. Within the game itself, how important is setting the tone physically? And how much has that been a part of the mindset, you know, with the success that you guys have had? Uh, I, I just think we have a, a, a common mentality right now just to go out there, have fun. Really, I mean, go out there, have fun competing, be very physical, uh, you know, be talkative out there uh, against other players, against the other coaching staffs. And uh, we need to have a veteran group so we're able to hold each other accountable a, a little a little bit different differently, I feel. You know, we get to talk <laughs> talk to each other, you know, with a purpose. You know, we, we care. So sometimes, you, like I said the other day, sometimes – it's things go viral where you see things on our bench where we're yelling at each other and going at it, but it's really fun uh, when you know that getting stops and, and playing defense and everybody getting a chance to play and improve themselves out there, uh, you know, it should makes us better. Uh, so we're just thinking about the long term, but we're having fun right now. It's cool. <clears throat> Malika Andrews with ESPN. Uh, Kyrie, Steve said that it seems like over the course of this road trip, you all have bought into playing for each other, gotten to know each other a little bit better, and that means you want to invest in each other a little bit more. Do you feel that from your perspective? I mean, I feel that from life. You know, when you want to be successful at anything, you got to invest in people, um, and you got to understand the human element that, you know, like I said, not everybody's going to be the same or have the, the same thought process. So I think we're just coming to understand that we're all different. Uh, you know, we're all individuals, but we can hold each other to a standard uh, where we all meet. And I think we've been able to kind of communicate that in a, in a very unique way. And Steve holds us accountable uh, because we, we need to be coached. We, you know, I don't know everything. Everyone else on the team doesn't know everything. So it takes a full collective effort uh, for us to go against these great teams. You know, that, that's what I feel. So I, I think he's right. I agree with him on his sentiment. Um, but like I said, it's just a standard we can hold each other to. You know, we want to be coached hard. So. Thanks, Curry. Mm -hmm. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Curry, what does it do for this team to win six in a row and then look over and see Kevin, who's not even healthy right now, working his way back to the floor? Like, what kind of feeling does that give this group to know that you still have a guy like Kevin who could go out there and get you 30, but that you didn't need him to sweep this road trip? Well, <clears throat> well, we need him <laughs> in, in all aspects. Uh, you know, whether he's on the floor or not, uh, he makes this thing work. Uh, you know, we came here with a plan to be able to build something here in Brooklyn. And I think for the time being, winning six in a row, all it does is just keep the world silent for a little bit and then, you know, wait until we kind of hit a bump in the road and then it's what's going on with the net. So I think we just take both polarities uh, and, and just stay the course. And the destination is making it to that main stage uh, and earning our way there first and foremost. You know, it's nothing's given. Uh, so, like I said, we're just going to continue to enjoy the journey. Okay. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Kai. Um, going back to what you were saying about you guys wanting to be coached hard, I'm curious, if you go all the way back to the, the Detroit game, I mean, are you guys being coached, I guess, harder than you had, or are you guys processing the coaching that you're getting differently or are you guys just kind of coming together as guys off the court and that's helping you on the court well i i think i went on quote by saying that we look very average so uh <laughs> i think everyone kind of took that personally including myself and um you know we just used that as motivation and guys came out in the indiana game and, and we played with that effort and i feel like we've continued to do so since then to be able to uh, you know, go out there and do what we say we want to do. You know, we don't just want to talk a good game and say we're collect, you know, collectively together and we're united and we're not. You, you could see it on the floor. We weren't connected at all, you know, especially going against uh, sub 500 teams that we have, you know, we had a losing record to or winning record to, uh, losing record to. And that was embarrassing, you know. So we, we just want to, like I said, continue to de demand that standard of excellence. You know, I know I say it's just words, but you guys don't get a chance to be in our locker room all the time. Um, but the preparation is where it starts. You know, walkthroughs, being able to do the little things, to remember the details, to go out there uh, and, and just play your game with a structure in mind. You know, like we need structure. You know, NBA players, you know, entertainers, anybody out there, we need structure to be able to succeed at the highest level. And you've seen the that go out there and do it. So. 
uh, we just want to continue to stay consistent, um, injuries aside. So, <clears throat> Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Kyrie, on that final offensive possession where DeAndre had to put back off your three, just what were you seeing with the defense, and was that the shot you wanted there? Yes, Alex, that's the shot I wanted. <laughs> like, we got a question, is that bro? I'm on the right wing, right step back, it goes in and out. I'm, I'm thinking that's down. I told the Clippers, like, y'all got away with one of that one just to have a little fun talking out there on the floor. But um, I missed a lot of shots in the fourth quarter that I feel like could have easily been made. But you got to give credit, uh, you know, to their team. They kept battling, battling. And, um, you know, we saw a different lineup towards the end of the game as well. So I'm sure that we'll see PG next time down the stretch. Um, you know, we're glad we could get out of here with a win. Bruce Beck with NBC New York. Hey, Kyrie, my kids and grandkids need structure, too, by the way. Um, <laughs> we all do. I know. You were in attack mode tonight. You had the, the two-handed flush. You had the left-handed floater. Yeah, that was that was a dunk we were all talking about. Uh, that pass to DeAndre for the hammer jam. I just wanted to know how enjoyable the whole experience was for you tonight. Oh, uh, man, it, it just fun playing basketball at the highest level. You know, before we, we, we play against, um, you know, some of the – elite players in the league, you know, it just reminds me, I remind myself that it's just another chance to go against the best. Um, it's a chance to try out, you know, everything that you've worked on um, every single day to prepare uh, to go against the best. And we got a chance to do that. And I always say this, but I don't want to take it for granted ever. You know, I give all the glory to God for having all the talent, but going out there and being able to have some fun and, and play with some friends of mine, it, you know, makes it, makes it worthwhile. Doing a lot off the court as well. So being on the court, um, it, I don't want to take it for granted. <clears throat> Last question, Adam Reese with NBC News. Kyrie, I just want to get your thoughts on fans coming back to Barclays on Tuesday. What does it mean to have fans in the stands? And what's it been like playing with COVID? How will it make a difference having them there rooting you on? <clears throat> well, uh, like I said in the beginning of the conversation, um, you know, it's just tough out here in the world dealing with uh, some of the protocols and um, some of the deaths that have been happening, the death tolls that have been happening with COVID. You know, it's very unfortunate. And like I always say, I, I wish peace and blessings and, and, a, and a lot of well wishes to everybody at home that watch us, that don't get a chance to watch us, everyone, because we are one under the sun. So my thing is always when I go out there and play, it it's crazy. You know, this, it's a different reality for all of us. So it's been taking some time to get used to and um, inviting fans back in. I, I feel like it, it does great things for the league. Uh, you know, it does great things for us in, in terms of the motivation. Um, you know, they're a big part that makes this whole engine run. Um, but besides our fans, we, we have an, op uh, an opportunity to, you know, set a mark in history as, you know, making sure we take the right safety precautions make sure that we're standing on the right things, such as truth, you know, giving people the right information and, um, you know, just making it about the collective. We understand the position that we're in as NBA players or as entertainers, you know, in modern day society, um, but we're humans at the end of the day and we all feel for everybody at home. So if they get a chance, to, if fans get a chance to come and see us play, I want to make sure I put on a show for them um, and then go out and continue to change the world the best way I know how with other people that um, want to do the same. So I'm, I'm excited, you know, see what happens. Uh, I just pray everyone stays safe and make sure they wear their masks, make sure you're washing your hands, making sure you're taking all precautions and, uh, you know, let's handle this together. So. Thanks, Kyrie. Yes, sir. Thanks so much, Kyrie.